Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today I'm revisiting the popular 5 color Invasion of Alara combo deck that you might remember trying to combo with Bramble Familiar's Fetch Quest as technically the only cheap card we're gonna hit with Invasion of Alara. Now the deck's gone through a few different iterations and this is where I ended up. So now besides Bramble Familiar we have another cheap card that we can find if we cast Invasion of Alara, namely two copies of Ancient Cornucopia. So if I cast Invasion of of Alara, there is a non-zero percent chance that I hit two copies of Ancient Cornucopia, but for the most part we're about 90% to hit at least one Bramble Familiar, and then the goal is to fetch quest, milling seven cards, putting a creature enchantment or land from among them onto the battlefield, and then we're often hoping to find a Cemetery Desecrator, which when it enters can remove a card from a graveyard to then either give a creature minus X minus X until of turn, where X is that spell's mana value, or we can remove X counters from a permanent, where one once again, X is that spell's mana value. So in this case, we're going to try to remove seven counters of our Invasion of Alara to immediately transform it into Awaken the Maelstrom. And we've got quite a few seven mana cards that we can exile with the Desecrator, despite potentially being a two mana play. Herd Migration still counts as a seven mana sorcery. Virtue of Persistence we can cast as a two mana sorcery as early removal against aggro to gain some life, but it's also powerful seven mana enchantment. And then there's also the Frexen Flesh Gorger, which can be played as a 3-3 with Menace and Lifelink, but is also a 7 mana 7-5 seven, with those same abilities, including Ward. So those are all 7 mana cards that we can exile with the Desecrator, and conveniently we'll have milled a bunch of cards with Fetch Quest, so there's a chance that we both mill a 7 mana card as well as a Desecrator, put Desecrator in play, exile 7 mana card, transform Invasion of Alara, and then now we immediately get to Awaken the Maelstrom, which not only draws 2 cards, but also can put an artifact from our hand onto the battle field, so we can maybe put a Flesh Gorger into play, which is a great way to stabilize against aggro, and there's also the Ancient Cornucopia, which we might have found with Invasion of Alara, so we can put that in play as well to maybe cast more spells or gain some life right away, and then we still get to copy one of our permanents, so we're often going to copy the Desecrator to take out another creature. We can also destroy a permanent, including even a land from the opponent, and finally we also get to add some counters to our creatures, so we can start growing Desecrator or maybe Flesh Gorger that we put in play. So all it takes is a single Invasion of Alara to make all that happen. So that's kind of the goal of the deck. Now, of course, we aren't guaranteed to have Invasion of Alara in every opening hand, which is why I'm now also playing four copies of Make Your Own Luck. This sorcery looks at the top three cards of our library. We can exile a non-land card from among them. If we do, it becomes plotted. So we can cast it for free on the following turn, and then the rest still goes into our hand. So still a powerful card draw effect. And because we have all these expensive spells that we can play, plot, including Virtue, Hurt Migration, which can make a bunch of beasts since we have lots of lands to enable domain. We can also maybe plot a Flesh Gorger and cast a 7 mana half, and then just casting a Desecrator can be pretty decent. And then of course the goal is to cast a free Fetch Quest, which can then once again set off that whole chain in motion. And then uh, of course ideally we have an Invasion of Alara on the battlefield as well, so we can immediately transform it. So that's why I'm now running 4 copies of Make Your Own Luck. And then rounding out a deck, we also have a Leyline Binding, which we can often cast for just 1 or 2 mana, thanks to all the Tri Lands enabling domain. So that gives us another cheap removal spell. So yeah, despite having a bunch of 7 drops in the deck, if you lay out the curve, it's actually not that crazy. So that makes the deck a lot more reasonable against aggro compared to maybe some of the previous builds which had more 7 mana cards in the deck, which were fun if you could hit them with a fetch quest in case you didn't hit the Cemetery Desecrator, but they were maybe a little bit overkill or maybe win more in a lot of circumstances. So now we've got a much lower curve and the deck is a bit sleeker, and then Ancient Cornucopia in to Invasion of Alara can also gain us 5 life instantly, so that's very helpful against aggro, but otherwise the philosophy is still very much the same. And then a Virtue of Persistence in the late game can also loop back Frex and Flesh Gorger or Cemetery Desecrator, as well as the opponent's creatures. So yeah, the deck's quite powerful, more consistent than ever before, and should also be better against aggro since we have lots of removal, lots of life gain as well with the Flesh Gorger, with the Cornucopia, and the Virtue of Persistence, and then even Herd Migration gains 3 and can get a basic. So we've got a lot of useful tools to survive the aggro decks in the format, while still having those crazy combo turns to go over the top of mid-range and control. And then the mana base needs lots of tri lands. Lanor Waste also important, providing double black for Flesh Gorger to cast it early while still being a green source for Migration and Familiar and even Cornucopia if we need to cast it. 
And then uh, we also don't want to have too many green sources that only make green mana. So we only have the one forest to find with herd migration, because if we both have a forest and a Bramble Familiar in play, that's going to make double green, which is not enough to cast our Invasion of Alara, which needs one of each color. So we really want to spread out the colors as much as possible, which is why we don't have a four off any tri land. And we also have some additional dual lands here to round out the mana base. And then of course, one of each basic to search up with herd migration. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. And we're missing Make Your Own Luck as well as Invasion. We can eventually use Herd Migration to get to red mana. But also missing Double Black, so yeah, this hand's kind of awkward. This is much better. So I could go Garden to cast a turn to Binding or Migration for a Swamp. So, could just get rid of the familiar, although casting familiar can maybe speed up the combo by a turn. But generally speaking, it tends to get removed, so I think I prefer just keeping the extra lands instead. And then the interaction with Leyline Binding. Opponent on the red aggro. So finding our virtue to gain some life back and remove a creature could also be good. Now, Proving Ground doesn't let me play one mana binding since we're missing Island. So we'll just uh, keep up binding and migration. But yeah, we're on track to combo on turn 5. Phoenix Chick picks up a counter. We'll see if they try and pump it up. If they do, I might binding it. Alright, that makes it easy. So no pressure. And uh, play this one tapped. And then we can start thinking about which basic to get. We have islands. Can make it a swamp so we have double black for Flash Gorger. Okay, Slick Shot's still kind of scary since that can represent a lot of damage out of nowhere. So I could cycle the headquarters since we have two untapped lands, but I'll just keep it simple. But yeah, I guess technically by cycling this and keeping white mana available, I could still cast a one mana Leyline Binding if we top decked it. Alright, just need a good Invasion of Alara here. We didn't brick, since hitting double cornucopia was also a risk. And then we found the Desecrator with a 7 mana card in the graveyard already. Either Herd Migration or Virtue. Transform Invasion. And then I can put my artifact in play for free as well, for what it's worth. So I get to draw two. Destroy the Slick Shots. A land was also an option. Put in Cornucopia. We can uh, copy the Cornucopia, maybe. Or we could copy the Desecrator to remove another creature. But now I can still play the Familiar. Gain some life. And then next turn, make your own luck, we'll gain four life. So we should be in the driver's seat. Alright, Witch Talker Frenzy plus another removal spell can maybe finish off the Desecrator. Can just block with a Familiar, I guess. Since it will get exiled by Etching of Kumano, opponent was out of cards. And then now we get to have some fun with Make Your Own Luck. Could also just cast the Herd Migration, but let's just gain four. Hit a Virtue of Persistence or Flash Gorger, and then I can just cast a Virtue. Gaining some more life. So yeah, seeing the utility of Cornucopia here, stabilizing us against aggro. And then while we may not have cards like Atraxa or Itali as additional curve toppers, against aggro usually you just need a little bit of extra life gain. And then Flash Gorger is good enough to cross the finish line. 
So we can cast this for free. And then cast herd migration. Gaining some more life. And we can take out Squee. But yeah, once we cast the Invasion of Alara and we hit the Desecrator, it was basically game over. We can just kind of cast our cards at random and still win. But it's got another Squee. It's gonna gain a 7 life. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're missing Invasion as well as Green Mana, so this hand doesn't do much. Got our Invasion, no Green Mana either here, double make your own luck, one of them can go. I'm still gonna keep, and then just hope to find some of our Green tri lands early. And there's one of them. So we've got a bit of removal, might be up against the Domain deck. So they're not going to apply much pressure early. And hopefully we can kind of go over the top with our invasion turn. But yeah, it's not a guarantee. Bramble Familiar a bit late to the party. But I'll still cast it. Opponent can immediately ramp and transform the uh, invasion by attacking it with a stomper here if they'd like. I could just block, so they're unable to cast a 1-mana Leyline Binding, although I guess they're missing Mountain, so a Leyline Binding would cost them 2 mana. So I guess I'm fine to let it transform, otherwise Leyline Binding could maybe mess up some of our turn here with the invasion of Alara. Alright, let's go for it. Fetch quest. And we hit a Desecrator, perfect. Exile Herd Migration. Remove seven counters. And immediately flip our battle into Awaken the Maelstrom. I'll draw two. What do we want to destroy? Could be a land, could be the Skyclave. Let's uh, maybe get rid of their Swamp. Put in Cornucopia for free. And then I can copy maybe the Desecrator and then remove the Skyclave. Get some plus one counters. Desecrator triggers. Get rid of Invasion. That's enough to remove the Skyclave. All right, it's a pretty decent turn. And attack for five. Opponent could have a Sunfall to reset all the creatures in play, but we still have a solid hand. Spelunking can still play Sunfall if they have the land. Portico entering untapped while still surveilling. And it's just going to be another Stomper. Okay, so no Sunfall means we can keep attacking next turn. And the opponent only has the one Swamp, so now their Domain Synergies look a lot worse. There's not too many ways in Standard to destroy basic lands, admittedly. Okay, so what are we looking at? Can make our own luck versus... I could play a Desecrator, remove Flesh Gorger or Herd Migration to clear a Stomper so we can keep up the pressure. I think I prefer that actually, since they didn't sunfall me last turn. They might have a leyline binding in hand. And then with all these menacing desecrators, we can potentially attack past an Atraxa once they find the black mana, I guess. So we can attack all out. Opponent Trump's taking eight. Keeping Flash Gorger in the graveyard also good for Virtue of Persistence if we eventually cast the enchantment. 
So we're putting back up to 10. Did they draw a sweeper in the meantime? They found black mana and there's a Traxa with three mana left. But we are attacking for 12 points of menace. Leyline Binding, I guess, can uh, get in the way. So if they're binding a Desecrator, the game's not over yet. So what's my plan? Go to attackers. I could Virtue Persistence shrink down Atraxa. That way the Familiar can still attack. And then our opponent's going to be forced to trade Atraxa for Familiar. And then I can still play Virtue Persistence afterwards. Or can I? I guess I'll be one mana short of both using the Adventure and casting the Enchantment. But yeah, I do want to get rid of Atraxa. So I think that's still worth it here. And then I'll probably just make my own luck could also make my own look first, and then if I draw Leyline Binding, I guess uh, I can just win right now. So that's probably the play, actually. Should have started here. We'll gain two. No Leyline Binding. I'll go with a free adventure then. Attack. Opponent will be forced to trade. And they still probably have to cast Depopulate. And then we can uh, hopefully keep going with our Bramble Familiar. Now we'll not have an Invasion of Alara in play to transform. But we can also cast Herd Migration. To present lethal once again. And uh, sure, we'll get rid of Atraxa. Although maybe that's a mistake, because I might be able to reanimate it with my own virtue. Don't know if the opponent has a way to reanimate their creatures. They usually don't. Okay. And a Stomper. Fair enough. So step one, free fetch quest. There's a leyline binding we wanted earlier. Can uh, go for virtue of persistence now. Sure, could also binding their binding to get back desecrator. And then cast Hurt Migration. So that can threaten lethal next turn. So yeah, having an Atraxa to reanimate would have been nice. But we should manage without it. There's still a Flash Gorger to get back. Up the Beanstalk, draws a card. And a Depopulate, alright, so game's not over yet. And Archangel can gain some life back. But our opponent's now top decking. So turn where we cast Double Flash Gorger is likely gonna do it. In the event that they draw another sweeper, especially one that exiles. I guess I'll just play a land and plan to cycle, as opposed to play familiar with a plan of maybe picking it back up. Serpon can attack up to 13 and then take 14 on the way back. All right, another Archangel keeps them in the game. Opponent's hanging back to double block Flash Gorger, so if we find a removal spell we can still win. And I guess Desecrator will do it. So they should have attacked while they had the chance. Alright, sweet. It's a nice grindy game here against a domain. On to the next one.
Okay, we're on the draw, definitely keeping. Can cast a cheap binding, virtue, and then hopefully turn five invasion. So we've got a decent hand against aggro. And how do we want to sequence our lands? So definitely want to play a white tri land. Don't think it matters too much which one. And then with a swamp, this can be cast for two, but we might just virtue first. Binding can still hit enchantments like War Leader's Call, whereas Virtue cannot. So yeah, despite having this weird restriction of all these expensive spells, we can still interact pretty reasonably in the early turns. So... Take out the Epicure. Opponent may be missing white mana, never mind. And now we'll Convoke Knight Errant, which can also find a 3-drop, such as the Recruiter. Okay, so we're staring down a bit of damage next turn. But I can Binding the Knight Errant. Don't have a turn 4 play lined up, other than maybe cycling a Headquarters. So drawing another cheaper spell, maybe a Flash Gorger as a 3-3 three -three would be appreciated. We're at 11. And the Desecrator is going to be a little slow. So I could cycle in the hopes of drawing another binding. But I need to keep my untap plan for invasion next turn, so I don't think there's really a reason to cycle right now. Because I would have to play the ridge and keep white man available. So I don't think uh, that's quite worth it. Let's see if we're dead. Another recruiter might do it. Alright, take five. And Evangelist is going to be quite scary next turn. So we need a good invasion of Alara here to survive. Probably want to cycle this one. All right, Flesh Gorger in hands. If we can flip our battle, we can immediately put it in play, but we do need to mill a Desecrator for that to work. At least we didn't hit double Cornucopia. Come on, Desecrator. And yeah, there it is, awesome. So grab the Desecrator. And then we also needed a seven mana card to exile, so yeah, the stars aligned for us. So I will draw two cards, we will destroy the Evangelist, yeah I think that makes sense. can also finish it off with another Desecrator since I get to copy something. And then more counters on the Flash Gorger to gain more life. And then Desecrator can just finish off the Flyer now. Okay, at six life, I don't hate our board state. Even if they pump up their bank token, we should be alright. And then next turn we're gonna gain ten life at least. I guess I could have Gleeful Demolition to destroy my Flesh Gorger. Hadn't thought about that. But uh, would have cost them ten life. They don't, so now they seem pretty dead and our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Hopefully get to showcase Cornucopia into Invasion of Alara. To immediately gain 5, up against either white aggro or a poison deck. And then we want to lead on a white tri -land to maybe cast 2 mana binding. Alright, it is mono white aggro. So Thalia could maybe slow things down, but then we probably would have seen it on turn two. So now I'm in favor of... Could even cast a Bramble Familiar, although it might still get removed. Yeah, if I play 
forest. I can two mana binding. Still won't really be able to interact with Athalia. I would have to go for Skrelv first. So I could also just play a tap line and pass. And then next turn I can play Cornucopia plus a one mana binding. Alright, opponent just animating Mishra's Foundry. That's fine. Could have been a lot worse. So now I think I still like Cornucopia plus Binding, but I'll need an untapped land in order to cast Invasion next turn. And then I guess I'll wait on playing the Binding, but it's probably going to have to target Skrelv. Right, adversary can pump their team. If Skrelv attacks, we could target the Vanguard, but... Still gonna cast it, gain one life. And then an untapped lands. And we can likely combo. There we go. Just double checking here, but yeah, colors seem to work out. Gain five life as well. And now we're guaranteed to hit a Bramble Familiar since there's already Cornucopia in play. And let's see what we can find. No Desecrator this time, but a uh, Leyline Binding is still decent. Answer the Vanguard since we can't pay Ward. Another Adversary. Can remove one with a binding next turn, play familiar, and then maybe set up another fetch quest with invasion already in play in case we find Desecrator. Gain one, and then by playing binding in the opponent's turn we can gain another one life. Could also just play another familiar actually. It's probably fine. All right, anniversary number three. So I could still double block one of them. And then binding the other, we trade. And I'll still have, I guess, only six mana next turn. All right, in that case, I'll just exile one of them and keep my familiars on the battlefield. Right, there's our last familiar, so now Invasion's not going to hit anything except for Cornucopia. And there's a Desecrator, perfect. Get rid of Herd Migration. Transform Invasion. I'll draw two cards, destroy one adversary, could also go after a land. But then we'll just copy Desecrator and remove the second adversary, and then we're going to be super far ahead. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand has potential as long as we can hit a try land in our first two turns, basically. And then Cornucopia sets up Invasion beautifully. Yeah, I'll keep, I think. But we will need some help off the top. Migration helps, so that can get maybe a swamp for starters. And then play Cornucopia. Facing blue-white could be control. We'll see if this gets countered. If it does, invasion has a better chance of resolving. Opponent just deduces for now. And a Chrome Host Sea Shark is next. Okay. 
So I can just remove that now with a binding. And then next turn set up our invasion. Can even play another binding in the opponent's turn. Hope they tap out again, but not gonna be quite as lucky this time. Alright, now that we drew another invasion, I'm fine if this one gets countered. Get to gain 5 life either way. Otherwise, I might have played a Flash Gorger to kind of test out the waters a bit. Alright, one's gonna counter that one. And now another Sea Shark. They could still have no more lies in hand. So, to play it safe, we can make our own luck instead of uh, casting the invasion. And then gain two. And then we hit Bramble Familiar. So we can fetch quest for free. And then with Cornucopia in hand, we're guaranteed to hit Bramble Familiar with Invasion of Alara. Opponent able to deduce, make an additional incubator token. Now six mana available. And they're gonna go on the beat town plan. Now I would prefer to Invasion of Alara first before fetching quests. That way if I hit a Desecrator, I can actually transform my battle. Opponent deduces. Yeah, no more lies would be unfortunate. But we'll still give it a shot. And gain 5, so we're not dying to these attacks anytime soon. Alright, so now we have our battle on the battlefield. They could still maybe answer it if they have a white removal spell for it, maybe. But then we still have another Bramble Familiar in case we don't hit Desecrator on the first attempt, but we did. Okay. Transform our battle by exiling herd migration. Flash Gorger we can still maybe return. Can put a Flash Gorger in play for free. So our opponent's going to need to wipe the board. Can destroy their creature land as well, assuming this works. So I'm not too incentivized here to fetch quests again, even though we could because our opponent already is likely to wipe the board. I'll draw two, destroy Anchorage. They could also maybe counter Awaken the Maelstrom, but doesn't seem to be the case. And put in a Flesh Gorger. And then what do we want to copy? Probably a land at this point, or just Cornucopia. If they have Farewell, I'm better off copying the land, and again, the life probably doesn't matter since they're probably going to mill me with Jace. So I'll just copy a land. And then get some additional counters. Alright, that's good enough for now. And again, hold the fetch quest until next turn, maybe. Shark attacks, and then we'll see a board wipe depopulate. So Desecrator still triggers. Can actually remove counters from the Incubator tokens, so that's still relevant. Now we are milling quite a few cards, so Jace can potentially just uh, kill us with a single activation here. But yeah, we need to get back on the board. So I can make my own luck, hope to find another Invasion of Alara. There's two left in the deck, I believe. Can also cast a 7-mana Flesh Gorger, but that's unlikely to go the distance. So we need another impactful turn, basically. And found another Bramble Familiar versus Virtue Persistence. I guess we'll grab the Virtue. Can start looping back our creatures. And then, yeah, I guess we'll fetch quest. And then maybe still play a Flash Gorger afterwards. Okay, we hit Flash Gorger. And I can play another one, or I can play Cornucopia. It's 
good enough for now. Next turn we get a free Virtue of Persistence. So we're not going to run out of action anytime soon. Question is, can our opponent just play Jace to Millis for 15 and call it a day? Double Jace would be lethal. Possible they're on Sea Shark as their win condition and therefore don't have as many copies of Jace. Right, it's going to be the two mana Jace, not quite the one I had in mind. That's fine. And the wedding announcement exiled. Okay, so it might be more of a mid-range deck than I imagined. I guess we'll just binding the Jace. Step one, attack. Opponent does have the Wandering Emperor, so that can exile Flesh Quarter, so we can get it back with Virtue. But uh, we should still have some other options, including more Flesh Quarters. And this will still cost them seven life. And in fact, I think we'll just cast this for 7 as well. Plus a familiar. And then next turn I'll maybe fetch quest again. 20 cards left. And there's a wedding announcement. And 3 steps ahead to draw and discard. Wouldn't be shocked to see another Wandering Emperor here. They can still make a Samurai. And a Sea Shark. Alright, that's beatable. So put counter on Sea Shark now. Strike fast and strike hard. Make a token. And get back probably a Desecrator now. So we can either remove their Planeswalker or the Sea Shark itself. Yeah, I guess the Sea Shark is fine. Make sure to select the right mode. Okay. So, Flash Gorger can go face while Familiar makes him jump with a token. Then next turn they could minus on the Flash Gorger, so that could be annoying. But yeah, since we don't think they're on the 4 mana Jace, we may as well fetch quest here and maybe hit something impactful. such as another Desecrator. So I'll just remove their Planeswalker now. And then we can attack face. They can, I guess, animate the Incubator, so never mind. The Familiar has to stay home. If they want to double block, that's fine by me. We've got the inevitability with Virtue of Persistence. Opponent just draws with a clue. And uh, opponent probably already needs a board wipe. So don't feel inclined to play more familiars out. But I can maybe play one and still cycle a Rafine's Tower. Okay. Let's see what they've got. The juice. Consider. Yeah, those are good cards alongside a Siege Shark. Just a bunch of cheap cantrips. They might have Tesseret, Betrayer of Flesh, to cheaply activate their various artifacts as well. But yeah, this Incubator, remember, doesn't have any counters on it, thanks to the Desecrator. So that will instantly die if they pay the two. But they do have a 4-4 four, four left. Alright, opponent had a sweeper anyway. So that happens. Desecrator triggers, so we can take out another incubator here. And then I could also remove counters from wedding announcements, not sure if that benefits me. Keeps them making 1-1s one for longer. So I don't think I bother. And 
then we can cycle Rafine's Tower. And find another Virtue. So we can take out a token and then cast it. And for now, getting back a Sea Char could also be decent since I'm about to make some large incubators and that helps play around sorcery speed removal. And another invasion, also pretty nice. Although it's not going to hit another Bramble Familiar since we're out. So yeah, I'll just uh, try this. Now if they have removal, they could take out their own token to fizzle my enchantment. But they don't. So cast this, make a 7-7 seven, seven token. And then we can maybe attack with those next turn. Alright, 10 cards remaining. Still don't think they're trying to mill me to death, but you never know. Make another token. Virtue triggers. Get back a Desecrator and a Flesh Gorger. Desecrator can remove their only blocker, which clears a path for the incubators to win. So let's see if that's the case. It's going to be a knockout blow, back up to 10, still a little bit short, and Wandering Emperor. All right, we get another turn here. Finally, I'm home. I am almost sad to see you go. So, I guess never mind, it is a 1-1 thanks to Wedding Festivity now, so it could have actually trumped can cast the invasion, but it doesn't accomplish anything. And with nine cards remaining, I'm hesitant to mill seven, so... I guess I can just cast the invasion for fun. To gain ten life. And see what's left. Still have heard migration times three, virtue, desecrator. So plenty of win conditions. And then I guess I could just cast this for two. So maybe should have uh, done all this first main phase to get more tokens from the Sea Shark. But I assume that they're still dead next turn if they don't top deck a Sweeper. I guess they can make an extra blocker here to maybe get one extra turn. Although Virtue can get back Desecrator times two, so that can clear two more blockers. Put and definitely put up a fight. And you can see if this were a more traditional control deck with Jace, we would have gotten milled out by now. So that's not a particularly great matchup. All right, and our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with not the most exciting hands since we're missing Make Your Own Luck or Invasion of Alara, but we do have good mana, good removal, a bit of life gain. So I think I still try since we have eight cards we're actively hoping to find. And then I want to start with a white source. So if I go Garden into Lounge, we can cast one mana Binding. All right, and there's our Invasion, perfect. So one mana Binding available. I'll still need another untapped land if I want to curve Cornucopia into Invasion. But I'm not really in a hurry. Opponent on Mono Green, so they shouldn't have much in the way of interaction. 
and with a cornucopia we're guaranteed to hit Bramble Familiar. Opponent ramping with Stomper, so they're black green. Yeah, can binding the Stomper, I guess. Just to use up our mana. Gain a life. And no untapped land, so we'll have to wait one more turn. One of the migrations can be discarded. I'll keep the other one as a win condition. And now a Tortoise. Would have been a good target for binding since exiling the Tortoise prevents it from coming back. But uh, yeah, just need a lucky Invasion of Alara, finding a Desecrator, and we should be in business. Gain 5 as well. And what do we get? Alright, not the best here, just a Bramble Familiar or a land. I guess I'll get a land then. Maybe should have made it an untapped one to still take out the Tortoise before it attacks. Can try again next turn with the uh, fetch quests, and then maybe we'll find the Desecrator. Opponent playing with Nissa, so that can also be an answer to artifacts and enchantments. The Cottage could also mess with our Graveyard. And it's gonna get in there, pumped by the Tortoise, also getting a 1 mana discount. So a little easier to activate. And then they should go after my 7 mana card which is what I need to actually transform the invasion. But they went for the creature. And they found another cottage. And then the Iron Crag is next. Okay. Got a binding in case this doesn't work out. And now we found the Desecrator. So we can flip our battle and get rid of maybe a Nissa even, since this is still 7 mana. I'll draw 2, destroy maybe a Cottage since I'll be able to copy Desecrator to remove the Tortoise. And then exile another Tortoise. Okay, not a bad turn. Our hand is pretty stacked, so the only way the opponent recovers here is if they can maybe build up a board and then kill me out of nowhere with a Nissa ultimate. Maybe if they're playing the Black Sweeper, that can extract a card from my deck, but nope, it's just going to be a Toxrill. So can simply answer that with a Leyline Binding. And then we've got a few ways to continue our turn. Probably just gonna cast a herd migration. But yeah, if we're afraid of a board wipe, I could maybe diversify and go for virtue. But if herd migration works, we could just end the game next turn. So it seems worth a try. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So that's six wins in a row, facing a variety of archetypes as we get to rank up here. So yeah, we beat aggro, we beat a more controlling deck, mid-range. So yeah, this seems to be the real deal. Of course, we got pretty lucky to find Invasion of Alara in almost all of our games. And uh, sometimes 
that one turn difference between make your own luck and invasion of Alara can make or break a game, especially when you're facing aggro. But overall I've been pretty happy with this build, and I think make your own luck adds that little bit of extra consistency that the deck lacked before, and then Cornucopia has also been a pretty nice addition, not only fixing our colors but also gaining that much needed life against aggro, and happens to be another artifact we can put in play for free with Awaken the Maelstrom, so there's even more synergy there as well. Even though if you have two copies of uh, Cornucopia there's always that small fail rate, but if you do the math it's still around 90% likely to hit a fetch quest, so I still like those odds. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!